Welcome to the metropolis, the big city. This is where tech, trends, and culture meet. Meet the people. See the sights. Walk the city streets and experience the lifestyle. This is your first class ticket to the cities of the world. Rome, Italy's capital city, is sprawling with up to 3,000 years of art, architecture, and culture that's visually arresting and food for the soul. Add to that the historical ancient ruins you've always heard about. There's the Forum, the Colosseum, all symbolic of the former Roman Empire. Rome is home to the Vatican City, headquarters of the Roman Catholic Church. It is also where you'll find the Basilica of St. Peter and the rest of the Vatican Museums, which feature the world-class masterpieces such as Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel frescoes. At the same time, religion is considered just as sacred. Did you know that every year, there are hundreds of thousands of visitors from all over the world flying to Rome for a pilgrimage? Their main agenda is a visit to the Eternal City to see St. Peter's Basilica, explore the Vatican Museums, and of course, attend the Papal Mass. And then we move on to art and architecture. What Rome has on display is certainly incomparable to anywhere in the world. Plus, you can see it all for free inside the churches. Santa Maria in Trastevere Church is often praised for its beautiful Byzantine mosaics. There's also coffee and sports. Romans are addicted to coffee and, well, soccer. Calcio or soccer is one of their favorite pastimes, both true for males and females. Calcio is usually the main point of discussion at the bar or over coffee. Last but not least, food. Romans are very well versed in culinary. Their food is considered one of the tastiest in Italy. Hearty comfort food are what diners are after when in Rome. The most popular ones are the pasta amatriciana, pasta made with tomatoes, pancetta, and a little bit of onion. Pasta carbonara, pasta made with egg, black pepper, guanciale, and pecorino cheese. Cacio e pepe, pasta made simply with lots of black pepper and pecorino cheese. Their antipastis are popular as well, such as the carciofi alla romana, Roman-style artichokes, olive ascolana, fried olives stuffed with ham, arancini and supli, fried rice balls made with mozzarella and tomato, and more. Kansas is a state in the Great Plains region of the United States. It is generally considered the center of the country, at least geographically, thus its nickname, the Heart of America. A slice of classic America, Kansas is known for its rugged cowboy culture and sweeping prairies. Home, home on the range are words from the state's official song. Tourists are often curious to visit and stay on its authentic cattle ranches that range from rustic to luxurious. Kansas also offers a rich Native American history with several museums devoted to the American Indian tribes. Up to today, there are still many of the original tribes residing in Kansas. 
Kansas is in fact named after the Kansas Native American tribe, which once inhabited the area. The name is believed to mean "people of the wind" or "people of the south wind." The tribes today generally live along the villages near the river valleys. The Flint Hills is a good place to go, where you can tour the vast tall grass prairie via a covered wagon. It's where you should see an American bison and attend a rodeo during your visit. Among the known sites in Kansas are the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail. The story behind this is that back then, between May 1804 and September 1806, there were a bunch of men with a woman and a baby who traveled from the plains of the Midwest up to the shores of the Pacific Ocean. They called themselves the Corps of Discovery. Then there's the Fort Scott National Historic Site, which is ground zero for the bleeding Kansas term, where the state slave policy can be thoroughly studied. And then, of course, make time to eat. Have a taste of the city smoked barbecue, as it is what its locals are most proud of. Kansas City style barbecue? You've heard of this for sure. It is a slow pit style barbecue, usually with sauce that's considered an important component to the meal. Aside from barbecue, Kansas is also known for its fried chicken. There are actually about six chicken houses to be found in the southeastern parts of Kansas. Fried chicken dinners are served or as side dishes. Fried chicken is a distinctive dish in southeast Kansas, making the region known and visited for their chicken meals. Venice. What's the first thing to do when in Venice? Get lost. With the marvelous and captivating beauty of the city, it's highly recommended that you wander through the streets and alleys for as long as you please. Saint Mark's Square is certainly one of the most popular, and it's especially beautiful when there are little people in it. Early morning or late in the evening, you might find the square to just a few people. Venice also isn't quite known for its nightlife, so it's perfect to appreciate the quiet and be at peace with your lonesome in this city. Restaurants close early and the huge crowds disappear. Next thing you should try is the Grand Canal tour. Aside from walking around Venice, it's through this tour that you should also see the city. The Grand Canal only has a few bridge crossings, and taking a ride on one of the city's water buses is definitely a must-try. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the view. A lot of tourists also frequent the Murano Island. This is where glass blowing demos are held. It's both entertaining and educational at the same time. Then, another island in the Venice Lagoon is worth the trip. Catch a vaporetto to Milano instead of a boat, and then walk around the streets. Then there's the Doge's Palace. It's partly connected to and stands almost right next to the Basilica. It's called the Palazzo Ducale in Italian. Why do people love it? Because it's where you get to walk over the famous Bridge of Sighs. Then there's the secret to seeing the city with a view from the top. The top of the Campanile or the bell tower, located right in front of the church, is the place to be. From there, the views are amazing, and of course, you can get a closer look at the huge bells that ring out all the time. There's the Burano Island, recommended for its lesser crowded streets and brightly painted buildings. It sets itself up as the perfect backdrop for an afternoon stroll. The colors of the city feels like a movie, so light and cheery, and will surely leave a smile on your face. 
Torcello Island is another, which gives you the escape to nature you might need. It's the place to go if you want to escape from the crowds, the tourists, and the busy city. Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires boasts a generation of designers, soccer players, musicians, and restaurateurs. All of them have enlivened the capital city, pushing it forward to be one of the most talked about travel destinations to date. What it promises is a bittersweet charm, the combination of the old fashioned sensibility and contemporary revolution. And both are an amazement to visitors and reminiscent too. First order of duty in the city? Honor the dead. Yes, one of the popular spots in Buenos Aires is the Recoleta Cemetery. Its architectural style takes inspiration from Art Nouveau to Neo-Gothic. The result? A site with a maze of narrow passageways lined with a marble statuary and decorative mausoleums. And then of course, there's the stained glass windows, the marble angels, cherubs in stone relief, and poetry etched in granite. You must know also that in Buenos Aires, football isn't just a game, it's a national pastime. So much that city streets are cleared and spectators are all glued to the game, huddled around TV screens if not in stadium crowds. You must definitely witness a match at the La Bombonera, the famed stadium of Club Atlético Boca Juniors. Next up is the true authentic experience of the city. Course through the quaint San Telmo which exudes faded grandeur and bohemian spirit. What to watch out for? The Bell Epoch architecture that's only elegant, and the crumbling villas that take cues from 19th century design. It's the antique dealers, tango clubs and restaurants that attract a steady stream of tourists to the city. You should also know that Buenos Aires is called the Paris of the South for another reason. Coffee. Buenos Aires' lively cafe culture emulates Parisian appeal. You better check out one of its lofty cafes during your visit. Already relaxed? Then it's time to shop! The city's open air fairs are inviting. There's nothing like an artisan fair on a weekend. It's when the city's outdoor markets are flocked with treasure hunters hoarding things like antiques, silver jewelry, leather goods, and clothes. It's considered a shopaholic playground, so shop away! Macau Macau is known as the city where Eastern and Western cultures meet. The city's charm rests in the contrast between old and new, antiques and fashion, traditional and modern. Macau also has a reputation for being Asia's largest destination for gambling. The city is also a major port for trade between the countries China, Japan, India and Europe. One of the top destinations in Macau is the Museum of Macau, the biggest one in the region. It's got superb collections of its culture and history, dating back from the Neolithic period up to today. This is the place to be if you want a historic, general idea of what Macau will be all about. Then there's also the Venetian Macau, the largest single structure hotel building in the entirety of Asia. It's also the second largest building in the world. Located on the Kotai Strip, it is a six-star hotel and casino resort that will remind you of the romantic Venice and the exciting Vegas. It has about 3,000 suites with exquisite attractions and amenities. 
with dining, performance, entertainment, shopping, and exhibition feats, you'll surely enjoy your time here. Imagine 35 stylish restaurants, 300 boutiques, and a mix of sports and leisure facilities. Next up is the Largo do Senado, or the Senado Square, known for the hip place for celebrations in Macau. What's attractive about this place is its design. It's got wave pattern mosaic of colored stones and was also inscribed on UNESCO's World Heritage List as it forms part of the historic center of Macau. An example of the city's rich architectural tradition is St. Dominic's Church and the Lille Senado Building. Reflect multicultural dimension of the Macau community. Around it, you'll find the best shopping centers and the traditional Chinese restaurants that tourists frequent. This makes it one of the more popular venues in the city. And lastly, didn't we say Macau is a city for gambling? Bet on horses at the Macau Jockey Club in Taipa Island, which is home to about 1,000 horses and has a race course area that can seat up to 18,000 gamblers. You'll get to experience horse racing and gambling entertainment with tourists and the locals here. Dallas The fourth most populous metropolitan area in the United States. It is a major city in the state of Texas, known as a center for its oil and cotton industries and its position along railroad lines. The city has an ideal location, right in the center of the U.S., making it conducive for Texan tax breaks. Because of this, Dallas has then developed to become one of the leading corporate destinations in the country. There are 24 Fortune 500 companies in the Dallas-Fort Worth metropolitan area. The Dallas Convention Center is one of the mostly expansive and highly trafficked facilities of its kind in the world because of the city's popularity as a business destination. As a result, Dallas has also become a shopping destination. Dallas remains an unparalleled shopping landscape. There's the North Park Center and the Galleria Dallas, which are considered two titans among the city's many malls and shopping spots. Then there's the Highland Park Village, described as gargantuan by any other standard. It offers a unique thrill from being the world's second planned shopping center, plus a registered historical landmark at that. Talking about Dallas, we can't leave out the topic of sports for sure. Dallas is home to four teams from each of the major sports. There's the NFL's Dallas Cowboys, the MLB's Texas Rangers, the NBA's Dallas Mavericks, and the NHL's Dallas Stars. Because of this, Dallas is considered part of the elite pantheon of U.S. cities that are home to these four teams. Dallas is also the only city in the U.S. to have hosted the Super Bowl, the World Series, and the NBA Finals all within the same year. Now beat that! Now sports stock side, there's also food and the arts. Steak is the main food item that locals in Dallas are most proud of. The country's most highly ranked and regarded steakhouses can be found here. The popular places are Bob's Steak and Chop House. This was ranked first by the USDA Prime Steakhouses chart in 2011. And as for the art scene, there's the art district in the northern sector of Dallas's downtown. Here you'll find the Dallas Museum of Art, the Morton H. Mayerson Symphony Center, and the impressive Nasher Sculpture Center. From sports, art, food, and everything in between, indeed, the city is filled with surprises and a lot to offer. Florence 
the capital city of the Italian region of Tuscany and the metropolitan city of Florence. Florence was in fact the center of European trade and finance during the medieval times. It is also referred to as the birthplace of the Renaissance, thus its nickname, the Athens of the Middle Ages. Each year, up to 13 million tourists attract the historic center of Florence. Florence's architecture boasts an amazement that only the city can offer. The popular Duomo encompasses the city, especially with its magnificent height and grandeur. The equally tall Campanile of the Duomo rings its bell throughout the day, and each day, people look forward to it, being one of the famous sounds of Florence. The palazzi, or the buildings, that are frequented in the city remain one of the must-sees of its yearly visitors. There's the Ponte Vecchio, or the Old Bridge, which is the only bridge that remains intact and wasn't destroyed by the Nazis during the time of the Second World War. One of the city's irresistible charms also lies in the rich culture of art that's a buzz in the city. Each street and alleyway is free and flowing with art. Enter museums to witness sculptures, paintings, drawings, and more that have been made by the very hands of the Renaissance artists. The Uffizi Gallery, Palazzo Pitti, Accademia, and Bargello are the main prime spots for these historic art. There's the Michelangelo that roams the halls of the Accademia. Discover Uffizi and its most viewed works, like the David Botticelli entices viewers with his Primavera, while Da Vinci is everywhere you look. Now on to the special dishes that you can only be served in and around Tuscany. The Papardal alla lepre or jackrabbit, or Papardal con rago di singial or wild boar are two of the most popular ones. The jackrabbit and the wild boar are hunted in the countryside that surrounds Florence. And speaking of pasta, you definitely cannot enjoy it to the fullest without a glass of wine. So thankfully, Florence is a city of wine aplenty. You can rely on the city to serve you the best and a variety of its wines. Wine in Florence is easy to find and not as expensive and best enjoyed with friends and family. It's time for us to go! Pack your bags and get your tickets ready! And we'll see you on the next destination! Catch us again next time on Cities of the World!